Welcome to episode seven of Nudges and Bridges. This one we're going to entitle, I'll be there for you even when you're not on my side. So this in some ways is the easiest of all of the videos that I'm going to be doing in this series because the notion is the friendship. And gosh, if you are friends, then of course you have created a bridge and a nudge for you to be able to reach across if through, um, to, to talk with each other. I mean, isn't that what friendship is about? And so in some ways, this is a very easy one, but I want to make it a little bit harder and hopefully a little bit richer. I may want to make it a little bit harder because the tagline on this or the, the, the back part of this is even when you're not on my side. Now, earlier in these series, I made mention of an example of a women's college softball game in the Pacific Northwest where after a player hit a home run, she broke her ACL and the opposing team picked her up and carried across the bases to score the home run, something that they did not have to do, something that the rules did not prohibit, but you usually don't help the other team score a run against you, which is exactly what they did. And it's a great story when an SB award and people get very tearful and emotional and, and, and love it because it's a great example of sportsmanship. But there are other examples too of where people find themselves at very different odds with each other, yet they can have a profound friendship with each other that allows them to communicate, allows them in a, not only in a civil way, but in a constructive way because it helps them understand their own positions in a lot of ways better themselves. So a couple of examples of this. One is um, Justices Ginsburg and Scalia. Uh, rather famously, were on about as different sides of the political and judicial spectrum as you can find, with Justice Ginsburg being a you know, very progressive, uh, uh, liberal uh, approach to Supreme Court jurisprudence, and Justice Scalia being a very conservative, originalist uh, approach to, the, to jurisprudence. But they were great, fast friends. They did things together. They went to music together. They went parasailing together. And if you listen to them talk about each other, and there's, there's some wonderful stuff in, in Ginsburg in her own words where you can see you know, both of them, a, a movie where you can see both of them interact with each other. You know, as Kalea says, you know, what's not to like except of her views of the law? And you know, it goes back and forth with this, that they totally disagreed with each other on just about everything that you could think of when it came to making you know, Supreme Court decisions. But they were able to embrace each other in their humanity and adore each other. And it's not just them. You know, more recently, you can see um, you know, philosophers, political theorists like Robert George and Cornell West. Again, with George, a very, very conservative uh, political thinker and West, a very liberal one, who do shows together, debate each other, with completely opposite points of view, but they call themselves each other's brothers. And they physically embrace each other because I don't know what I would do without this person. And so we get ourselves so much these days into the notion that if someone disagrees with us, that they're evil people, that they're bad people, that we, that we treat them with contempt. And boy, when you start treating people with contempt, the conversation is going to go sideways at best. But you can also understand that there are ways in which people can be very, very different from each other, disagree with each other, and at the same time, bond with each other and have a sense of humanity with each other as well. Now, I don't want to make this Pollyanna. I mean, sometimes you're not going to bond. I mean, there are some people that are so far out that there is going to be opposition. We can't necessarily be friends with everybody. But we can be friends with a lot more people than what we might be thinking today. And that I think is worth keeping in mind of being there for each other, even if they're on the other side hitting a home run against us, even if they're creating judicial opinions on the other side that we disagree with, even if they have political philosophies that we disagree with too, there's still a lot about each other that we may be able to embrace much more than what we might think is available in these contentious times. Give one other quick example going back to a sports kind of an example, although it's sport in a different way. It's not a sport in the sense that one side's going to win or the other side's going to lose, but it's a, it's a short little video from the New York City Marathon. And at the end of the marathon, there was one runner who just a few yards from the finish line collapses. He just can't go any further. 
And what happens is that two guys who I don't believe knew the collapsing runner at all, pick the runner up and put him on their shoulders. And the three of them went across the finish line because the game, goal wasn't for one of them to win and one for them to lose, but for all of them to get across the finish line. And so these strangers picked up, it's a nice interracial thing because the, the participants there are of different races to um, go across each other and they help each other out, even though that they were strangers. So sometimes if you're a stranger, sometimes even if it seems like you're an enemy, there can be a lot more humanity, a lot more friendship, a lot more relationship than what you thought possible if you just give yourself a little bit of time to recognize that. A simple one, this is the easiest one of them all. A simple one for, for today.